Welcome back. So today we're going to play some more Shenzhen IO. Um, I forget where we left off. I think we got through about 10 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, 9 of these. The last of them was the VR buzzer, which our friend uh, David P. Solomon um, said that he would appreciate for his own benefit, and he thinks that other people would benefit from this as well. Just a, a buzzer that goes off um, when a signal when it goes above an activation threshold. So we did that and did pretty well at that and further optimized it. It was pretty great. Um, so let's jump right into our next email here. Sometimes a decent product idea falls out when you're faffing about with chips and code and the like. So I've set up an empty prototype board for us to experiment on. On you go! Mmm, chips. We can test with some different parts too, such as custom LCD panels. I will add other new parts as we receive them. Custom LCDs? Are you serious? That's brilliant! We could make retro style handheld games. Let's all take turns designing one. Carl, come see me. If you've finished all your other assignments, I have more work for you. Who's this Carl fellow you mentioned? Nobody we know. Objective, design and create an electronic game. Oh. Oh. Um, okay, I guess we'll be honest about this. Um, wait. Huh? Well, that's a note. Do I have a circuit board? Where did my board go? Uh, I guess I don't need a board. Never mind. I'm just accustomed to having one. What kind of electronic game could I make anyway? Hmm. Well, this is... Okay, and then we got one of those. The N4SW, as opposed to the NS4W. All right. Um... Yeah, no, I, it's an N4 switch. That's what it stands for. Um, okay. That's a thing. Okay. Sure. Maybe. How do I know when I win? Okay. Um, oh, check that out. Gotta make room for one of these things. Oh. Okay. Um. Okay. Got one of these. Um. Never leave home without one of those. Wait, how do I move this space around? Oh, I guess I can wire things. Um. I forget how to move my board around. Now that I don't have a board to drag. Okay, so we got one of FM. Alright, frequency modulator perhaps? I don't know. Yeah, solitaire is excellent. Um, it's optional, there is no wing condition. Um, yeah. I mean... That's pretty different than other things. Um, we're gonna win this somehow. I'm gonna find a way. The game will tell me that there is no win condition, but you know, oh, we got a part type, mis a signal type mismatch. Something. Can I connect all these ports together? Okay, let's do that. And oh. Here you can't connect that to itself, but we can connect it to this maybe. Loop that in here to there. Okay, we have a pin type mismatch. 
Does this connect? Got more pin type mismatches. All right. You know, I, this would go better if I actually read the supporting documentation, but. Um, okay. Oops. Okay, and we'll loop this together, maybe? I don't know. Here, let's put those together. Link the. Oh, can't do that. Um, I assume, likewise, this doesn't connect, right? Okay. Um, and then we'll do. I don't know. Does this connect? No. All the pin types mismatch. But I guess we'll bust the things together this way. Um, we'll connect under. Well, actually, we could do this. And move this around. Well, actually, we don't have to display the part. Um, so to show the wires, we hit tab. So I could connect this port. Oh. If I wanted to connect this port going out, I'd have to do something like that. Oh, but then I don't have room to connect this. So whatever. Okay, that's a pin type mismatch. And I guess something like that is okay. I could run some wires underneath this thing. Um, let's see, is there room to run a wire below? No. Okay, and we already checked that most of these other type pin types mismatch. Um, okay. Oh, we can't even run it. All right, whatever. There is no win condition. You've connected the parts. Yay. I guess that's the goal. There's no way for us to verify this. So you're trusting you. You promise you really made a game. Uh, whatever. We'll leave that be. Today, I want to talk about the goofy things visitors here tend to say. Actually, just one thing. Every time a certain kind of Western visitor comes to China and looks around, they go, wait a second, I thought China was communist. So why is everyone shopping at the store? What is up with that? And that's when everyone around laughs, because one, the dude thinks he's making some good observation when we've heard that at least one trillion times before, and two, gosh, it's complicated, okay? What's important is that so many of these guys' impressions of communist China still come straight out of the 1970s, and they still are so surprised when they get here, like they had no idea that things were changing dramatically the whole time. Well, hey, you haven't been sitting around doing nothing since Nixon, and neither have we. And we've built more than just the factories with all, where all your smartphones and game consoles came from. The world is changing, fellas. Empty your mind. Don't cling to your fixed ideas. I believe in you. Okay? Okay. Tilly. Hmm. Interesting. I'm wrapping up a project to make a game console and can use some assistance. Before you get too excited, it sounds far more fun than it actually is. The console is just a tiny, super cheap box we're making for Sleep Cubes, the big Japanese capsule hotel chain, to stick in every pod. The games will just be some free dross they find, I'm sure. At any rate, I've got it mostly done, I just need a module for the little wireless controller that comes with it. I ping you, you tell me what's going on. Nothing more much, much more than that. Create a working design for the product. Okay. X and Y are simple inputs to a joystick. A and B are simple inputs connected to buttons. Radio RX is a non-blocking non-blocking X bus input connected to a radio receiver. Radio TX is an Xbox 
X bus output connected to a radio transmitter. When a data packet is received over the radio from the game console, respond with the following three value data packet, making sure to use the most recent input values. Data packets received over the radio from the game console respond with the following three value data packet. Okay. Zero if A and B are zero. One if A is a hundred and B is zero. Two if A is zero and B is a hundred. Three if A is a hundred and B is a hundred. Okay. Fair enough. And this is if signals are received. Hmm. So let's do something stupid first. Part connected to self. Alright, didn't think that would work. And if I just advance this a bit, um, we see that I'm failing to send out the appropriate three byte signal um, there. I'm not seeing... Oh, there's my other stuff. Can I zoom out? Am I playing this game in such a terrible resolution? Um, okay, but now I see all my inputs. Simple inputs X, Y, A, and B. Which are down here. Um, like there's my board. X, Y, A, and B. Um, and when a signal comes in, I need to transmit something out. Alright, so... Let's figure out how to do this. Um... Wait, so this has nothing... no. Transmit... Um, I don't care about X and Y. I'm being silly here. I just care about the buttons. He'll handle all the X and Y stuff. Alright, so... I just care what our values of A and B are. And I don't get to use all these other parts, or I'm, it's not recommended I use all these other parts. Instead, it's recommended that I use um, bridges and MC4000, MC6000. Well, let's first see if we can do this with the MC6000, because that sounds easy. Um, so this is an X bus, so it makes sense for us to connect an X um, to it. Although... Let's see. And A and B are uh, simple inputs. So they would connect to P1 and P2 ports. Um, I should probably move these things around. Let's push position that over there. Um, so... I can run this to P0. In fact, I could move this over a touch more, can I? 
Yeah, so we don't need to have a wire running that entire length. And... Okay, we do have room... We have a little room up there. Um... So... Let's see, can I connect both of my X buses without crossing wires? Yeah, the cleanest way to do it is like this. Um, alternatively, I could run wires under the chips, which would actually save a little bit of length of wire. Um, actually, no, it's the same thing. If I run them both the same way... No, it's, it doesn't matter how I run the wires, it's still going to take the same amount of wire. Uh, unless I do something super clever, like position this over to the side. Oh, but then I collide the wires that way. Um, or I could just connect it directly like that. Which also looks pretty funny, but it works. Um, or I could use multiple bridges and things just get messy, but either way. We got stuff that works that's all connected at this point. F is full screen? Okay, cool. It's helpful that it has that little F next to the full screen icon. Alright, so now I just have to write some code. Um, based on... These are pins, I forget what. Um, so... We're going to sleep X on... I think this is X0. I should have the reference manual handy, but... Um, we'll probably need to go get it again. Um, and then um, move, uh, what's it, x0 into dat? Yeah. Actually, wait. Do I even care about what the value of x0 is? This is just when a data packet is received. Okay, and I know if the data packet is received by... Oh. Well, it doesn't really matter what the value of the data packet is, now does it? Alright, so we sleep x on x0. And... Uh, so, check if P zero is zero. Um, not jump equal. Test for quality. Um, and if that's zero, I'm sorry. Let's test if that's a hundred. Um, jump L, and then we're gonna have label L down here. It's just gonna be test equality. P100 with a plus case and a minus case. Um, and then prior to this, we're going to have a start. Uh, actually, sleep is a bad name for this. Wait. Jump to wait, regardless how that goes. Um, all right. Uh, and so here's our other case where we're still going to need to test a quality P1 100. And we're going to have a plus and a minus case for that. Now, this begs the question our output signals are going to be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, so let me see if I can write a more minimal logic here. Hey, welcome, Kurlaub, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. We're just doing some Shenzhen. So, there's there's so many easy ways to do this, aren't there? It really doesn't matter in what order I check anything. And I'm starting to think this could be done on an MC4000 without any difficulty at all. Because the 4000 still has P1, P0. Yeah, this should all fit on a 4000, but let's do it on the 6000 first. And then just copy it all over. Um, 
Okay. So yeah, we don't need any of this jumping. No jump there. We just need to... Um, let's see. Oh, in fact, yeah, we can do things much more easily. Oh my goodness, this is... Okay. So we're going to test equality for... In fact, we don't even need the label at the start, because we're always going to go back up to the start when we're done. Test if P0 is equal to 100. Um, so if input... What's it? What's this input down here? A is P0. Um, so if A is set, um, we're going to say move 0 to accumulator, else move 0 to accumulator, because I did this wrong. Let's really move 1. If A is 100, we add 1. Test equality P1, 100. And if input B is set, then... Um, add 2, and then when we're done, move the result uh, over to um, whatever our data out register is, um, which I think is x1. If I got this backwards, we'll find out pretty soon. Okay. I think I got this backwards. If I pick this up, x0 is the one on top. No, I get, think I got that right. So sleep for x on x0. Um, so why is this still sleeping? I think I need the manual. Alright, so where's my manual? Is this it? No, that's the new design button. Oh, the manual's on my homepage. Data sheets. Uh, it opened in the background in my browser. Um. Sleep until data is available to be read on the Xbox pin specified by the operand. Okay, so I didn't have that wrong. Um, okay, so let me go back to our issue here. The problem is just that I'd wired it wrong or something. Um, I mean, let's put a bridge in, do things without running lines under chips. Or is it that I have my ports backwards? Yeah, it's RX is the receiver and TX is the transmitter. Oops. All right. Um, is there an undo button to move things back? There is. So all I have to do is switch X1 and X0. And we should have a working concept. Wait, wait, part not sleeping. Um, okay. No, I did have that right. No. Sleep on X1. Oh. Well... Okay, so it's constantly receiving input. And transmitting a lot of output. 
Um, um, so, I don't know, we'll test the quality of x1 and minus 1. And um, if that's not equal, then we'll jump back to the start. Yeah, we are waiting forever. Heart not sleeping. I mean, I could have this constantly. Yeah, let's do this differently. Rather than sleep X, because that's on an X bus, that's not what we need. Um, so we just sleep for one second. Test for equality x1 equal to negative 1. Um, actually, if, test if it's equal to 999, negative 999. And if so, um, just go back and wait another second. All right. Well, we failed somehow. Um, let me start this again. Sleep 1, test of x1 is set. Um, oh. Wait. What's x1? x1 should be this value of Okay, here it is minus one, so that's good. Uh, step 100. Okay. So we step, put a zero in the accumulator. Um, and then we move x zero to um, the output. So, expected 63370. Are we supposed to. Hmm. Actual NA. I thought we we're supposed to do. What was it? I thought these are the values we're supposed to send over on the transmitter if A is 0 and B is 0, etc. Um, it's possible this spec might... Maybe we should be sending, I don't know, the X and Y values or something? Expected 63370 and actual transmitted was NA. Um, well, let's just keep going. Let's keep advancing. So if I keep stepping. Okay, at least it has the courtesy to continue looping until we receive a signal. And when we do receive a signal, um, yeah, we should transmit this series of values. Three value data packet. Oh, packet one, packet two, packet three. Got it. This is not a truth table. This is the x and y actually do mean something. Okay, so we need to send x of them y, and then this computed value. That's not so hard. Okay. Um, 
means we're going to have to use more than one chip, but that's okay. So we need... Hmm. I'm trying to figure out a good way to wire this. Now let's take a look at our wires. Uh, I'm still going to end up jumping with a bridge somewhere. No, not necessarily. Um, here, let... Hmm. I'm tempted to start over, but that's a bit anxious on my part. Um, here, let me get a look at the wires, see if I can move this down a touch. There, run this like that, run this like that, and then jump this gap with a bridge uh, like this. And I know, recognize at present that's all connected, but um, I'm sorry, that's the receiver. Whatever. We'll leave the receiver alone and connect this to the transmitter. Um, well, it's actually okay that they all share a bus, even though there's going to be some interference. Um, it's actually fine. I actually don't need the bridge. We can wire it like that. That saves us the need for a bridge, and everything's still connected together. So what this means is, let's just copy this program over here. It actually fit, but that's not what we needed. Um, so, sleep one, test for input. If we have no input, um, jump back to the start. Otherwise, None of this testing stuff. Um, just move. Um, let's see. Move. What? How do we do this? P zero over to X zero. Move P one X zero. And then move our computed value, which we don't have. Um, and that's good enough. Now there's going to be destructive interference on the bus. <laughs> well, get two thirds of that value. Um, Oh, wait. Yeah, I could use a 6,000 and hook up... No, I couldn't. Never mind. You missed a chance at a hanging night because you were distracted. Uh, not the end of the world, still winning, but it is annoying. Um, depending on where you play your correspondence chess game, if you did see this the previous turn, you could set this thing called a conditional move. Um, I find it useful. I've played correspondence before. I've certainly used conditional moves for my own convenience. If only because I do forget my analysis. It's not just a way to speed up a game. It's also a way to make sure that you don't forget um, things that you previously looked at that you're super confident in. Um, just a thought.
So, this is where the thing gets challenging. Oh no, absolutely. Well, they did do conditionals. I'm almost certain they still do it. Um, but, yeah, it's worth taking a look at. If it's not part of the feature tour of all the things that pop up when a first person's first playing the correspondence game, I'll recommend they add it. Let's see. Well, so I got two values out of four, right? Or out of three, right? Um, yeah, and then if I keep stepping, it's not going to count that. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, hmm. This could take a little bit of ingenuity. Oh, I think I see a way to do this. So unfortunately the first step here is going to have to be moving this transmitter out of the way and reconnecting some wires. Um, so receiver is going to connect to X1. X0 is in turn going to feed into this thing. Um, uh, unfortunately, things still need to move about a bit more here. Uh, so let's move this. And then if I do tab... I can't like line this up perfectly uh, there's P1, here's P0, here's me connecting to the X0 port. Oh, right, my problem here is I still need to move this over a touch so I can run the X1 wire without connecting all the buses. So, it's not the most elegant solution, but it does work. And you see all the wires connect all the ports. Um, X1 is going to feed out to the transmitter. So, when we get a signal from the transmitter here, or receiver, we're going to take our values of A and B, pipe them out to the other chip. Um, <laughs> which... Instead of this sleep one test, etc., etc., stuff should be doing sleep X on X naught. And um, move X0 to X1, move X0 to X1 again, and then do all the following. Where we're going to test our values uh, on our input port and do all this computation stuff. Um, I think this should work. Let's step this one step at a time. Oh. Part not sleeping. Blocked on right. Oh, I tried to move on, put the output at the X1 port. There we go. Advance, advance, there we go. So that'll do it. Now the question is, can I fit these instructions on this little chip? Yes. So no need for something so complicated, when instead I can just use one of these. Um, just have to be careful how to connect things. So we got our power port We're going to unwire this, add a bridge, so this is how we're going to get that value. Oh, um, <laughs> P 
possibly a bridge is needed. Very possibly a bridge is needed. Because I'd like to run our x1 value out this side of the chip. Um, I think I've cramped myself on space a touch. Hmm. Yeah, stacking all these things horizontally isn't quite working. Alright, so... What's the cleanest way to make all this fit? Because my space constraints are a little bit different than what they were not too long ago. Um... Right, and I still can't run things under the chip to make it more efficient. Um, so I think our transmitter's got to move. Our receiver's got to move, our transmitter's got to move. This can still ca stay connected out the P1 port that way. Um, so bridge over the gap. So that's our receiver. Possibly I'm being super dense, and there's just a much easier way to do this. Um, right, so I do need this connected like that. Uh, this doesn't quite work either. So this chip has got to move. It can't be positioned exactly where it's at. Um, let's put the chip somewhere over here or something. Let's see. Let's go full screen. Oh! I can move these signals left and right. Um, let's see. So if I start by going this way, I think that's what I had earlier. I said that wouldn't work because of space constraints. Um, okay, there's P0, there's P1. Um, here's X1 and X0. Like that. So that's one way to do this. Is there a more minimal way to do this? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, I remember I used to use them on that side as well. So, what do I do now? How do I make this fit better? Like, I don't need to run all these wires and bridges and stuff exactly this way. Um. Oh, this has to go to the right one a little bit more here. Um. I guess I need another bridge. Something like that. Is there a more minimal way to do even all of this? Probably. Um, like, I could move my transmitter. Yeah, why don't I, while I'm at it... No, let's just make it work first. Um, now that it's working, we can copy the design and move everything around. So that's beautiful. Um, that keeps production costs at a minimum. There's a ton of code. Is there a simpler way to write this code, I wonder? Hmm. 
I wonder. <sighs> Too bad, like, the move command doesn't vacate the register, such that I would just be able to, like, not have to reset um, the value. Like, if I could get rid of that one particular line, that would remove an entire line of code. Um. Oh, hang on. We don't need this jump start here. Um. We only need to test, is this n equal to something other than my, uh, negative 999. Alright. It's full speed ahead. We saved a line of code, because you know that matters. Oh, apparently that's what most people do. Dang, I thought that was marginally clever. Apparently not. Um, hmm. So I'm looking at this and wondering, is there a better way to do it? Like, I could test the value of the B button first, and then test the A button. But that doesn't change the fact that I still have to reset the accumulator each time. Um... Hmm. Arguably, so we're seeing my only two values I could have for A and B are 0 or 100. I could take the values that are A and B, add them together, happening to add, um, uh, what's it, add B twice, and then divide by 100. That would consume more power, but it would take, it would always take uh, five lines of code. Add A, add B, add B. Um, well, no, we're not going to pull B twice, are we? Add B, add accumulator. Um, add A, divide by 100. Print out the value, and then reset the register. Um... <laughs> Let's see, instead of doing a test for a quality... well, no. So, what we're doing right now is testing the value of A, doing an assignment, and then testing the value of B and doing an assignment. What we could do is uh, do a different initialization. You know, we could do some funky math to make things go faster. Um, Hmm. These first few commands, like this move x0, move x0, are... I don't know. I need a sleep command there somewhere, or the power consumption's gonna go through the roof. Um... It's too bad I can't wait on X0 while moving it. Like, I think I need that initial sleep X, X0, right? I can't just move a value... I don't know. What happens if I get rid of the sleep here and try this? Um, what if I just say no sleeping? And... Okay, part not sleeping, blocked on read. So we do need to sleep in order to be able to read like that. Hmm. Otherwise, the, the part just fries out. Um, and there's no special command in the manual for like a sleep move sort of thing. Here, let me get the 
Shenzhen IO manual. Um, I'm gonna go look that up on this device here. Assuming I can get it. You wouldn't think that this would be a very difficult to acquire thing. Um, all right, continue. All right, here we are. For the best Shenzhen IO experience, they recommend you actually print the manual. I mean, that makes sense. Um, except I don't have a printer. I do like this manual, it's a beautiful thing, but I just don't have a printer. And I certainly don't have 47 pages. Huh. <laughs> Maybe it works sometime, I could start printing parts of it. Although then they'd wonder what I was up to. Wouldn't they? Um... In any event, I don't want to keep us all waiting here. Um, sorry, I got notifications and stuff. Oh, beautiful. Somebody made a Twitch IRC bot for Leech Us games. That's brilliant, honestly. Alright, so let me just check. Um,. Uh, I suppose I need to download this manual, this PDF, uh, in order to be able to search it. Okay. It's good to have a reference copy of it anyway. Alright, now let's use... Okay, so there's a number of basic instructions like NLP for no effect. Just um, effectively doing nothing. Move, jump, sleep. Sleep until data is available. Um, add, subtract, multiply, negate. Um, DGT. Isolate the specific, specified digit and store the result in the accumulator register. Uh, interesting. So I could use a DGT operation. So instead of doing this test for equality, I could say, um, what, what did this read? P0? Um, instead, what if I just want to do move P0 to the accumulator and use the digit operation, digit 2, yeah, I think this will provide the same output. I'm not sure what the power consumption requirements of DGT instruction are, but hopefully they're worse than what we used to have. We saved a line of code. Uh, power consumption is the same. As expected, production cost is still pretty damn good. We saved an entire line of code. Um, I don't suppose there's anything else fancy we can do here. That would be pretty astounding. So, again, the objective is to send a three packet datagram, X, y in this expression. And we get this expression by taking the a value, um, 
dividing it by 100, or in this case taking the hundreds place with DGT2, and then taking the B number, and if it's 100, adding 2. Let's see. Set the digit of accumulator specified the, by the first operand to the value of the second operand. Um, so DST. How does DST work? Oh, it takes two constants or maybe an input? Let's try DST here. Um, so P0. We have too many operands for that, but maybe for this it'll be okay. <laughs> nope. Um... P0. So I'm trying to say, take the value on the data bus. Set the digit of accumulator to the value of the second operand. Hmm. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, that's not what we're looking for. That would be... Well, I'm not sure how that's going to work. So, we want to set the zero place digit equal to the value of P0. I'm curious what it does. Okay, well, that's not quite it. Um... Yeah, it's me just trying to test edge cases of what the hardware does on unexpected input. Um, maybe there's uh, other... In fact, I think the game hints at the fact that there are some unexpected instructions on this hardware. Um, so it's up to you to find what the unexpected instructions are. But for this particular hardware set, I think that's the best I can get. Arguably we could start using memory banks and stuff or other things. Um, but these are all simple input-output as opposed to data input-output. I don't have a, any other way to trans... well... let's see. So this is a inverter. Um, let me see what the inverter does with this particular documentation. Um, <laughs> oh wait, what? So we have an inverter, an AND gate, an OR gate, an XOR gate. Um, yeah, there's probably fun stuff you could do with uh, simple input math at this point. Like if you really... Okay, and there's a math coprocessor, MC4010. For prototyping only. <laughs> there's a note from Carl. Okay, fair enough. I mean... Yeah, that's exciting. Okay. Yeah, if there were ever a chance to use the math coprocessor, this would probably be it. But, um, I think that does pretty well for this particular design. 
We did this with the reasonable production cost. Although I think you could maybe do better. Maybe if you had use of, um, I'm not even sure. Yeah, actually, I don't know. Given so many simple inputs, you need two chips that accept simple inputs. Th thanks, mate. I owe you one. You've just helped make thousands of dead, tired salarymen marginally happier. That is, if they f actually find the console and use it to play a game before passing out. Are you lonely? Do you feel isolated and disconnected from the world? Scientists have shown that a lack of real-life ties to others can lead to depression, which in turn can negatively affect performance at work. Don't let the lack of human interaction reduce your effectiveness. Virtual friends from BuddyBots are quality friends, nearly ind indistinguishable from real-life people. Our characters are developed by the world's top personality designers and are completely customizable. So whether you want a supportive presence to help you through a difficult time, or a flirtatious sidekick to banter with throughout the day, you're covered. Subscriptions are flexible and competitively priced with other bot companion services. Stop being lonely. Feel the connection. And become a top contributor to your company's success from your virtual friend. Tag, you're it. All right. Laser tag equipment. Creating working design uh, to view histograms and leaderboards. Please don't blame me for this. I have a friend, well, more like an acquaintance, really, from a while back, many jobs ago. He's always been a bit of a hun uh, nutter. And I guess what happened was that he made a decent bit of cash with an app or something and decided to retire from the programmer's life and build laser tag arenas for the rest of his days. That's not the worst of it. He's calling his franchise to be the Awesome Plex. Capital's his. In any case, he wanted to see if we could make some scorekeeping wearables for it, and I said yes. I'm not surely why I said yes. I suppose in the unlikely event his arenas do take off, it'll look brilliant in hindsight. Awesome Plex. When it's done, we should try a match in the office. Laser tag looks like so much fun. A lot of simple inputs, either on or off. Too many for a microcontroller on its own, but good use for the DX300. DX300. Uh, do I have a DX300? This thing. Okay. HIT is a simple input connected to an array of laser sensors on a vest. RESPAWN is a simple input connected to a quick connect jack on a vest. Um, it'd be funny if you miswired this. People really do great things at laser tag. So HIT's a simple input connected to an array of laser sensors on the vest. Respawns a simple input connected to a quick connect jack on a vest. Alive is a simple output connected to an array of LED lights on a vest. Trigger and reload are simple inputs connected to switches and a replica gun. Fire is a simple output connected to a laser and effects module and a replica gun. When the player is hit, their vest should be set to not alive. When the players respond, their vest should be set to alive. When a player reloads their gun, whether alive or not, their ammo count should be set to the ammo reload value, 5. Uh, when a player is alive, pulls the trigger and has ammo remaining, the gun should fire and the ammo count should be decremented by 1. To allow for realistic operation of various replica guns, the ammo reload value is set by the operator using a dial that can be read as an X bus input. Oh, they don't even give you a sample input. Oh, no they do. Never mind. They don't give you a truth table or anything. There's the specifications, all words and no diagrams. But uh, welcome to Shenzhen Province. <laughs> You're expected to be able to read and not be treated like a child here. It's more professional sort of experience, I suppose. Um. All right, so. 
Uh, da, da, da. When a player's hit, their vest should be set to not alive, but otherwise should be alive. Wait, what's this? The MC4000X. It's all X's. Uh, simple, simple, simple. Oh, right, right, right. These are all simple inputs. Um. Let me think about this. Whoa. This is a big board. This is a really big board. How do I move about the board? Shift, control shift, no. Um, I don't recall how to move the board. Hmm. I might need to play this particular design in a different display resolution in order to be able to make progress with it. Um, I know there is a way to move the board about. Oh, center click. Okay, center click. Hit, respawn, alive. Trigger, reload, fire. So... What's the deal here? I should read about this. Oh, you can actually rotate the parts in this game? You can actually rotate the parts. Okay. So I could just like do this. Not sure why, not sure what it even does. But this is the DX300. And those parts are pretty cheap. I probably should have been using those on other stages, but this stage kind of forces you to do it. It's the digital IO expander. Control your control the world with the digital DX300 digital IO expander. This unique and useful part can be read or write, can read or write up to three on-off signals at once over a simple I/O or X bus. Um, at any given time, the DX300 is either an input mode or output mode. Writing an X bus value will write put a simple I/O pins into output mode. Um, reading an X bus value will put it into input mode. Clearing any previously set output values. Well, that's cool. All right. So that makes sense. And then if I center click and go over here, arguably you could throw another DX300 on the board. And this one, if trigger, reload, and fire. All right. Um, okay. So we get all these X buses now. We can write a three digit number to any X bus pin to change the state of the simple IO. Uh, three digits. We'll turn the simple ML pins on or off, depending on whether the digit is a one or a zero. Read from any Xbus pin to get a three digit number that captures the state of the IO pins, um, which are either a hundred or zero. That's cool. Okay. I think I understand how a DX300 works. Um, so these, this is a bus, they're all three values are the same. But you could connect multiple chips to it if you so desired. Alright, so we've got... Oops, here, let's put this down here. Um, wait. Um, so I guess writing puts the whole thing in write mode. When the player's hit, the vest should be set to not alive. I mean, we could say that that's like step one of whatever we're doing. 
Um, oh, hang on, hang the heck on. We're going to need two registers. We're not going to get very far at all with just a single register. Okay. Um, yeah, we need an accumulator register to keep track of our ammo count. Um, can connect this together, right? This is X1. So you can say move X1 into accumulator, which is going to be done whenever there's a reload. Um, let's see. What else can we do? Um, expected outputs are um, fire and alive. Alright. So we got, oops, fire and alive. Got to be over here somewhere. There's alive. Doesn't need to go into here, but we will need a value to go to alive. And fire, um, we will need to work also. Um. <laughs> there we go. So we can move accumulator to P0, move accumulator to P1, and that's completely wrong, but it is a thing. Um. So let's see. Because fire and alive are the two outputs that we need to provide. Um, when the player is hit, okay, fire is a simple output connected to this. When a player is hit, the vest should be set to not alive. Okay, so the expected output for alive would be a hundred. For most, of the, no. Or the alive is supposed to be. Okay, we do need an ammo count. I guess it's possible for us to be alive and out of ammo. Jeez. Um, so that would mean that two registers aren't enough. Okay. Well. I mean, we could start looking at memory banks. Doesn't sound like the greatest idea, but I'm kind of confused how else to get a value of a live, unless we start chaining together multiple units. And we could certainly do that. Because we still need an ammo counter somewhere. It's like we need two 6,000s. One to keep track of if we're alive or not, and one to keep track of um, whether we fire or whether we do not fire. When we're alive, pull the trigger and have ammo remaining. Gun should fire and count should be decremented by one. Um, mm -mm. So, <laughs> where do we go? How do we do? I mean, certainly this can feed into both. Certainly, um, oops, that's not what I was looking for. Certainly I could feed this into both. In fact, there's no reason to get fancy here. Um, do the more obvious connection. <sighs> I wonder, can we throw a bridge across this? No. <laughs> you can't bridge on top of a switch. Or on top of whatever this is. Okay. Um, 
I mean, we could copy the same code here. Okay, it says pin is not connected. Did I say X1? I meant X3. Okay, whatever. Um, this is the least efficient thing I've ever seen. But it prints out values. <laughs> but never sleeps. Why would it? What's the point in sleeping? Alright, so... I mean, even if we add a sleep one at the top of it, that's not anywhere near what we need. Okay, so move this into the accumulator. Except it's not X3 we want to move, it's just a constant 100. We honestly don't care what our ammo count is here. We just care are we alive or not. Um. <laughs> and yeah, there's no need to connect this alive port down here. Nor is there a need to connect all that. So P1 and P0 can be managed independently. Um, now that said, 100 is not necessarily a very good value for alive. Because there will come times when um, events occur and the player um, uh, gets hit. What happens to ammo? No, wait. We don't ever print out an ammo count. It's just that if they fire, then this is going to need to contact our other chip and ask... Okay, we can't do that. Not directly. Um, here, let's move this. I think they laid out that um, counter where they did on purpose. I think they had something in mind here. And the thing they had in mind is that if you place down two MC6000 buses, or processors, you'd want to connect their data ports. I think they had that in mind. I think that even influenced where they chose to put all the um, uh, their input ports, um, as well as the output ports. Like they aligned alive with P zero down there on the six thousand, and they aligned fire well in an interesting way, but you're still kind of nudged toward putting your processors on the bottom half of this chip. And because the processors go on the bottom half of the chip, and because just a complete beginner is going to use a 6000 here, and even as an advanced player, you're probably going to start with a 6000 and then see if you can fit the same idea on the 4000, the smaller chip. Um, the game kind of nudges you into making this kind of hardware layout. Um, so you get to focus not so much on how you place the things on the board, because after all, you can't move around the uh, sockets, the, I'm sorry, the pins. You can't move those around. If you are a real hardware designer, you might get some influence as to where all the pins are, um, whatever, how that all lays out. Here, we just focus on not so much the hardware layout, but the coding itself. And I'm sure there are, later in the game, are probably some challenges with how you connect things together. But at least at this point, it's not seeming like that's what the game's trying to push you on. It's more trying to push you on innovation. Yeah, let's just connect that. Just so it looks kind of beautiful. Alright, so when a player is hit, the vest should be set to not alive. But 
otherwise it should be constantly pushing out the value of alive. Oh, we're going to get constant input on this, aren't we? Um, still, we're going to be required to sleep until we get an input. Um, and then I'm going to immediately consume the input. Uh, test for quality x0. Um, I don't even know. Actually, no, wait. I need to move it to the dat register because we do need to test. Um, we need to test what are all the various input combinations that could come in there. Even though there aren't that many. Um, so, test a quality of dat to zero or to something. I don't know. We'll say one. And if it's equal to one, then we're going to want to reset um, something. And do something similar for, I don't know, a different port to. Um, Let's see, do they at least do something convenient for us in terms of, um, if I go look over here, respawn and hit are on the same side. So that's sane. That's actually good. Okay. Hmm. This is causing me to wonder. I can't do like parallel processing and stuff here. Um, what I am wondering is how am I going to relay from um, well actually I have an idea okay so we're going to cut these wires a little bit shorter there in fact yeah, let's cut that way back move this chip way over here and instead of connecting on the data ports, we're going to connect on the simple port. Um, and the reason we're going to do that uh, is because in addition to moving something to the P0 pin, um, we're going to need to move uh, something to P1. And that something is going to need to be um, fact of we have our character being alive or not alive. We just need to move that over to the right, um, not synchronized as um, data, but just constantly push that value over to the right. Um, and hopefully that'll be okay. Alright, so... Yeah, and then this is simple and wrong, but that's okay. So if I step... Oh. I assume... Wait. Are both of these not sleeping? Part not sleeping, part not sleeping. Well, technically the one on the left here is sleeping, but okay. The one on the right, fine. And if I sleep here... Okay, what's the deal? Um, I mean, it says part not sleeping, but I don't know if I believe that. Hmm. This is something for me to ponder now, isn't it? Uh, sleeping for, sleeping an X0 seems wrong there. This really should not have anything to do with X0. This should be based on what's coming in on P1. But that's a simple input. Um, I don't know, we'll just sleep one all the time. Which is going to lead to desyncing 
problems. Wait, how do we do here? Advance. Where's our alive thing? Okay, so alive never got set. Um, let's advance. Step. Okay. We have zero in the dat register. Advance. Okay, move x0 to dat. 10. So 10 means respawn. Um, so we need to, our values that we're going to be checking are not um, 1 and 2, but are 10 and 100. Alright, so now, now our alive thing kind of sort of worked, but not really. Because we missed whether or not we got hit. Um, so we can set a breakpoint on here, I think. Control click. Why would it not be right click to toggle a breakpoint? Anyway, so we're up to here. Let's slow that back down to its default speed. Okay, so we hit our breakpoint. Uh, step. Oh, one. I have this upside down. So, test if it's. Um, here we go. That's a little bit slow. Let's crank up the juice a bit. Okay, so we still never got hit. Um, oh, right, right, right. Okay, so now our alive value is exactly as it should be. There we go. I think that's a reasonable pace for this to proceed at. Now, what we're going to have to check on the right is um, if somebody fired, um, then are we still alive? That all said, um, let me l just slightly alter the layout of these chips. And it'll become obvious why in a second. I'm push this over just one to the right. Uh, connect that, connect that, reconnect this. So that's okay. Now you see we got eight instructions here, right? Um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking this just might fit. Um, <laughs> And a better way to make this fit would actually be to move this up. Um, which is kind of going to change our values and our logic here. Uh, so instead of testing for uh, 10 and 1, we'll be testing for 100 and 10. Which is okay. But uh, my point is that these instructions can fit on that chip. We don't need the 6,000. Um, if I go do something like this, this should fit. Um, and this in turn means don't have to go down, we just go across. Uh, register not present. So we get x0. Actually, we don't have to move this so far to the right now, do we? Uh, let's clear this out a touch. Oh. Do we still need the dat register? We still need the dat register, don't we? Hmm. Unless I create a feedback loop, which I certainly can do. Um. There's our feedback loop. And that's not the cleanest way to wire it. That looks slightly cleaner, but also kind of hokey. Yeah, something like that. That's the same amount of solder, isn't it? We'll just do it this way. Oh! Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, where this can get a little more beautiful with soldering is there. So, we don't have a DAT register. That's okay. Um, we want to move this to the accumulator. And then, instead of testing for quality, we need to test for greater than, less than, whatever. Um, okay. So, I guess part one of this, well, hang on. This is getting a little bit confusing. I've created a feedback loop. Um, is there a test greater than or equal to instruction as well as a test equality instruction? I don't think so. Yeah, there's just a, well, I mean, we could try it. Test greater than or equal. Can, is there a TGQ? No. Test greater than accumulator, just test it with respect to 99. Oh, wait a second. Okay. Um, so all we need to check is did we get hit? Um, and if so, uh, let's see. <laughs> we actually need to test is our value um, not greater than 100. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I'll just call this um, and, whoops. Not sure why my mouse appeared to click there. Oh, end. Okay, in fact, we don't. That had better not count that as a line against me. Because that would be ridiculous. Um, okay, so furthermore, uh, let's uh, switch back out of full screen mode, which I was trying to do with the F key. Go back into full screen mode. Oh, how's the lar world's largest tech market game going? I think pretty well. I think we haven't set anything on fire just yet, so I think we're doing pretty good. Um, oh, wait a second. Is there a simpler way I can do some of this? We have the alive port, and then for some reason I'm printing the alive value twice. My goodness. Um, yeah, let's keep things simple, shall we? Um, actually, we do still need that. But we don't need both ports. We can just print like this. No, we can't. <laughs> uh, we can print like that, but we've connected the part to itself. We could. Here we go. Magic. Black magic. It's beautiful. Um, hmm. Oh. Even better black magic, I think. Part connected to self. Part connected to... S oh, I see, I see. So that's not permitted. So that's why I have to put this up here. Um, or I have to rewire the chip a little bit, which I might be able to do. Instead of running this directly out that way. Oh, but then I have to move this around. I still think it's going to look more beautiful when I'm done if I do it this way. Um, move to P0. So P0 is down here. There we go. I still think that looks best. Uh, looks a bit hokey if I don't put a little more solder under the chip. 
or maybe connect it this way. That looks cleaner somehow. Alright, so we've created a feedback loop. Uh, where this is the 110 and 1's place. Uh, does that make sense? And then we want to just test, are we greater than um, or equal? To, well, since we have no greater than or equal instruction, we just test, are we greater than 99? And that's a way of saying, did we get hit? And if so, um, just negate, um, vacate, um, wait, what? I was pretty sure that NEG is the instruction to empty the accumulator. Uh, what's it? Oh, I'm sorry, it was not negate, it was just simply not even cleaner um, so yeah I think that's really simple I can maybe simplify it further but I'm afraid to try so we take this hit respawn and alive values we're outputting an alive value with every cycle hmm yeah, no, I think that's okay. And that feeds back into our hit points. Um, so every time respawn or alive is set, our accumulator gets set to a value that's 10 or greater. However, if we get hit, our accumulator exceeds 99. It gets set to 100 or greater. In which case, we want to immediately uh, set the accumulator to zero. Um, so this is laser tag. Uh, sorry, you missed the first part there. Your controls um, are, do you get hit? Uh, has the respawn timer or whatever mechanism respawns you, respond to you? And print out, or rather output on the pin, um, is the player still alive? And on the right hand, we have a trigger and a reload and a fire. Um, So, um, you understand the idea of reloading resets your ammo count. Triggering will um, light up your weapon to indicate that the trigger has been activated. And you have to send an output onto uh, the output pin to indicate that that should be lit. Um, so that's the gist of what's going on there. Um, so sleep one, take, yeah, this is just reading in the value off of the ammo count and printing that, <laughs> no, that's not what we should be doing at all. That's pretty funny though. Um, Uh, at some point we need to accept the value of the actual input x3 which I guess is a hundred if you fire 10 if you reload I could move these just move this around a bit and say it's whatever 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 but um, let's see I also find it interesting you can flip these, but you cannot rotate them. I'm sure I'm assuming rotations would just confuse everybody, but I'm curious what you could do if you like spin these 90 degrees or 45 degrees or 60 degrees or something. I'm wondering just what's the most confusing circuit board you could make. But we don't need to go there. Um, I'm wondering if I can somehow do a feedback loop and have it make any sense at all. I don't think so.
Okay. Um, so we're going to move our input not to the accumulator, but to the data register. And um, we're just going to move uh, a 100 signal out to P1 to indicate that the gun's always illuminated, it's always firing. Which is not right. Um, Okay, well, let's see how we do. We already know that our alive output signal was doing something reasonable until I broke it. Um, yeah, our alive signal needs to be a strong 100 signal. Um, I wonder what happens if we send a signal greater than 100 out. Um, what happens? Okay, greater than 100 still peaks at 100, so... Um... Okay. So yeah, sending whatever's in my accumulator out is not such a bad thing. Um, it does, however, mean that if I want this feedback loop to work on the right, uh, the top pin to this is going to need to be my accumulator. So why don't we do that? Which in turn means I do need to move this back up. And make my feedback loop a little different than what it currently is. Um, <laughs> That's unfortunate. Oh wait, can I do this? No, because I can't I can't run a signal under this. Like I can't run it like that. That doesn't fit. There's no room for the signal that way. So I will need a bridge to connect some of this together. Where's my bridge tool? Here it is. So there's our bridge. Which once we go back to full screen mode and refocus over here. See, this gives us the capability to connect things. Um, and it's not any more beautiful one way or the other. So let's just do it the slightly ugly way. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, but then our test for being greater than a value doesn't quite work either. Um... Let's see how many things I can undo here. Let's put that part back. Alright, so we saw that our signal strength needs to be 100. Um, so what we're going to do is test are we less than 100. And if we are um, 100 or greater, negate before negating again. I think this should still provide us... whoops, that's not it. It's the wrong button. I think this should provide us uh, the desired output wave. Oh, it's not terrible. Oh, it immediately went to 100. Um, okay. Why did that happen? What happened here? It's advance, advance, state, exec. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, our accumulator is a hundred. Or sorry, zero. So all our inputs are zero. Um. Hmm. Move x is zero to the accumulator. So if respawn and hit and alive are all zero. Um. Let's 
let's see, test for a quality of accumulator is zero. And if it's anything other than zero, oh, well, we can't do a negation there either. Hmm, that's a problem. Um, can I cross some of these input pins somehow? That's a problem. Like, part connected to self if I do that. Oh, that's an interesting observation, yeah. Okay, what else can I try? How do I get this to output a signal of 100? Um, oh, maybe this will do it. That didn't do it at all. Um, start sleep one. Test equality for accumulator for a hundred, and if so, jump back to start. Okay, so if we have no hit points, just restart and sleep for another second. All right, so that didn't do it either. And here we have a value of 10. Um, oh. So now I have to write. Um, I have to do a double negation at the end of that. Okay, that didn't quite do it either. Um, what was the deal here now? So we've got an accumulator of 100. We move our input, check if we're 0, check if we're greater than 99. Wait, our input of 100 means that we got hit though, doesn't it? That's not good. Um, what does our hit signal come in as? Okay, so we're going to move... Okay, that comes in as exactly a 1. So, there's a simpler way to do all this, I think. Um, honestly, it'd be a lot easier if I could just map the hit to uh, the bottom port here. Um, like the physical wiring of this is actually affecting the logic that results. I want hit to be the highest bit. Or hit doesn't need to go through the D. Yeah, why am I using that part here? I'm using that because there's an abundance of input ports. However, it's really not serving my purposes here. Um. Yeah, to check if I got hit. Let's just wire this directly to my P1 port. That's a lot easier than any roundabout way that I could check if I ever got hit. Uh, now to make this a little more elegant, I'm just going to move this over a touch. Oh, but then we don't have room to connect on the P1 port. Um, I'm sorry, on the P0 port. We've run out of room here. All right, 
right, so we still need this attached the way it is. Uh, what we don't need is this going to the right. This could instead go under. Even though it looks janky, it, I mean, it still works. So let's stick with that clean way of wiring that. All right, um, so this can all be rewritten now, again. Um, uh, so how do I do this? Okay, first of all, what is it doing? It's reading the input, testing it for a quality to zero. Really, that could be simplified now that, um, yeah, instead of doing some conditions and stuff, it could say not, not. It's going to be more instructions executed, but we'll come back and optimize for instruction count, or I'm sorry, step count later or power consumption later. Or, I don't know, let's try to keep it simple and avoid the not-not stuff if we do, if there's a cleaner way to write this. Um, test if that's equal to zero, and if so, go back to the start. Not a bad idea. Um... Actually, we want to test if it's equal to 10. Um, and if so, well, no, that's OK. That's fine. Somehow we still need this to get set to 100, though, and that's the problem. Um, what currently occurs? Oh, how did that get set to 100? Okay, what's our output? Is this a 10? That's a 0. Okay, so somehow that actually worked. Um, test equality for pin 1 equal to 100, and if so, negate the contents. Um, something like that. Let's try that. That completely failed. Perfect. Let's try that. That didn't quite work because now our signal strength is 10. Which I was wondering how we got something greater than 10. It's because um, what I was initially doing here didn't make very much sense either. Um, instead of not here, um, we just want to move Oops. Reset the accumulator back down to zero. Um, but in the case where our input is equal, um, <laughs> do I even need to move this into the accumulator? in order to do my test. I don't think so. Test equality of x is 0. Actually, no. Test if it's um, x0 is greater than 0. And if so, move 100 into accumulator. And we don't need this sleep or this start uh, label anymore. So sleep, test the input, move 100. Uh, test the other input, move 0, etc. So our live signal, oh, we hit our breakpoint. Cool. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, we move 100 into the accumulator again. Um, test if P1 is equal to 100. And if so, null the accumulator. And then we... Yeah, so just keep going and yeah, we have our correct alive waveform. Um, but there's a cleaner way to write this. Test to see if this is equal to 10, and if so, set the accumulator to equal to 100. That's the cleanest way to go. All right, so now we still get the correct waveform as cleanly as possible. If there were like an MC3000 or 2000 chip or something like that, we could just use that here, but this is a really simple program. It's a shame, honestly, that I don't have a capacitor or something. I mean, we got this to play with. Um, I wonder if I could manage to play with that somehow. Yeah, not recommended. We'll stick with the easy way for now. Okay, so we got our alive signal going out to the alive port, as well as going over to our second half here. Alive is feeding into P0. Um, so, let's see. Sleep 1. Move our input from X3 into the data register. Um, and then we're just... Wait, is my f fire thing always on here? Is that what I'm doing? Yeah, that's pretty silly. Um, so... We want to test... Wait, we move X3 to the data register. We move accumulator to P1. No. Accumulator's gonna need to be our ammo thing. Um, so here we will need a loop to start us off. And test for... I'm not even sure what we get as inputs. Um, and I'm not sure what happens if you hit trigger and reload at exactly the same cycle. What are the odds? Um, test the quality of data equal to 10? And if so, then um, jump back to start or something? Wait, wait, wait. What's our specification tell us to do? When they respawn, set them alive. When they reload the gun, irrespective of whether they're alive, reset the ammo reload value. Okay, that's what I was wondering. So, um, that does mean that we can move, what's this pin? X zero into the accumulator. Okay. Um, and test if the accumulator is greater than zero. I'm sorry, test if accumulator is equal to zero. And if so, uh, jump back to the start. Otherwise, uh, test uh, quality of what uh, the data register is equal to 10. If that's equal to 10, whoops. Um, Yeah, something like this. Okay, so our reload triggered us to fire. Um, so.
So let's see. Let's try something else. Oh, close enough. Close enough. Not quite. So now I learned that these P1 and P0 stay at their various signal strengths until you change the signal strength. Um, hmm, so now what do I do? Uh, move 0 to P1. No, that's not very bright, is it? Um, Oh, I think this is okay. We're saying if we have no ammo, start over. Okay, I think this will work. There might be an edge, yeah. Okay, so there are edge cases where this is not working. Oh right, I forgot to pay attention to the value of the alive port. Um, okay. So we still have to pay attention to the reload value. Um, so we certainly have reload working. If we have no ammo, we start over. Um, if we are not alive, uh, jump start. And I think this probably could be tested first. Oh, hang on. There's our shortcut. I found it. No need to check for if we're alive or not. Um, just echo the alive value out the fire port. And if the player's not alive, then the fire port will also um, reflect that. Oh. We're out of ammo. We are so out of ammo. Because I forgot, each time you fire, um, we need to decrement the fire count. Um, let's decrement the fire count, sub 1. And there we go. So six shots. No, not quite it. Not quite it. So, I mean, I don't have to click. I could set breakpoints. Um, step. Oops. No, let's just step until the first shot. Okay. Are we equal to 100? Uh, yeah, our input is 100. So, we decrement the accumulator. Right. Okay. Oh, so here I'm not checking there's something I'm not checking that I need to be what is that oh I see I see um, what's the cleanest way to do this I mean one solution is move 0 to P1 and then jump back to the start um, It's kind of messy. Is it accurate? Yeah, it is accurate. No, it's not. We're still missing some cases. So if we're alive, um, let me read the rest of the spec again, carefully. When they reload the gun, irrespective of whether they're alive, their ammo count should be set to the reload value when they're alive and pull the trigger and have remaining ammo then fire the gun. Um, it's allowed for realistic operation. The ammo reload is settable by the operator here. So don't set it to a constant 5. Use the value from um, that. So this failed because um, okay, it says we have 3, 1, Zero. Yeah. Oh. So I should have reset. Um, where was my reload? Here is my last reload. OK. 
Okay. Let's set a breakpoint above this. And just step to the breakpoint. So we got our reload signal step. Um, right, so we do reload the gun at this point. Oh, am I decrementing? <laughs> if we're not alive, we can't decrement the counter. Okay, that's the deal. Um, yeah, I see. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So where this says start, I'm going to change this to loop. I'm going to change the first command to move 0 out to P1. Um, and we're just going to end up jumping up to the loop a whole bunch of times. Alright, so check if um, load the value. If it's equal to 10, then reload. Test if we're equal to 0. Um, hmm. This first needs to do test equality of p0 zero to 0. And if so, um, jump back to start. Um, so if we have no hit points, don't even bother um, trying to fire the weapon. Um, okay. If our accumulator is zero, we're out of shots. Print out a zero. No. So that's moved up to the start as well. So our player's dead, jump. If we have no ammo, jump. Else. Test if our data is equal to a hundred. If so, the input data was a hundred. Uh, decrement the accumulator. Okay. Um, and then moving P zero to P one works, but also just moving a hundred works. Um, all right, so something like this. No. Now we're missing all these. Why are we failing here? See if it's uh, 100 in our data register. Um, which means we're going to fire. Move 100 to P1. Oh, and then I need to jump back to loop. Um, um, I wonder, can I have like end? No, I can't have a negative and an end on the same line. All right. Interesting. Okay, let's just keep advancing. Uh, let's just try run it. Okay, it worked. Now, there's. I'm thinking of all kinds of ways to try to optimize this, because this certainly. Oh! Alive is incorrect here. Wait, when did that first get incorrect? That's wrong. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, let's remove the breakpoint.
And then somewhere over here. It was on this third run that we had a problem, right? Or was it not? Okay. It was on this third run um, that things should have um, reset and failed to reset. Wait, why did this fail? I'm so confused. On our first run, everything was okay. On test run number three of 80. Oh, there's 80 test runs, is that so? Yeah, it was on test run uh, four that we failed. One, two, three, and then this immediately reset because we failed on a subsequent test run because of the feedback loop. Um. That's interesting. It's a profiler. You can hide all those metrics if we wanted to, but I'm sorry, no, the profiler would actually tell us our consumption of power and such. Um, is there any requirement that at the beginning of the game you have to be set back to not alive or something? I'm not seeing that. Yeah, I'm curious. Like, what I did seems reasonable, I think. But evidently it's not good enough. I thought this was really clever. What I did with our alive counter. Um... Because this allowed me to use a 4,000 where otherwise a 6,000 might be necessary. I just don't know. Like, this isn't telling me where we failed. It does highlight something afterward, but I'm not able to go all the way to the right here. Um... Oh, it's on test run 12 of 80 that we fail. And the notion is that we respawn immediately instead of sleeping. So sleep one is misplaced. Um, so if I push that sleep one to the end, are we okay? Well, uh, yeah, until we hit a condition where, uh, let's see, why did this fail? Also, can I manage to get this to run to the breakpoint where I just put it? So, here we're looking at, I've got nothing in... This is probably the same thing. Yeah, we reload on frame zero. Um, so we can't sleep at the beginning of execution. We have to sleep at the end of execution. Okay. Um, hmm. Or rather, we can't start the program by sleeping. Um, so, okay, let's get rid of the sleep command and see just how screwed we are. Um. 
So that needs to sleep somewhere. Um, how's that gonna work? How is this gonna work? Am I gonna need to have sleep commands all over the place? Um, I guess for one thing, wait, loop here is what I'm using to skip over the print a zero command or output a zero. Um, yeah, yeah, so. We're going to change this to be as simple as possible now. Um, so right now I only have a way to move a value of 100 to P1 under the condition where this actually did fire. Obviously in every other circumstance we will need to set this to something other than 100. Um, So that leads me to my next question. What happens if I set this to 100 and immediately after I set it to 0? Is that an issue? Um, so, namely if we're out of ammo, um, reset that back to 0. One, and rather this is going to be, uh, if we fired, subtract one, move a hundred to P1 to indicate that we fired, and this is going to test, is our ammo less than one? If so, move a zero out. Now what else do we need to check? If we're alive, um, move a zero to the accumulator. So I think in theory this should be okay for real world oh, operating conditions. Um, I guess I got rid of all the jump commands. That's the only question here is what happens if we're emitting a 100 and instantly after emitting a zero. Yeah, that's not good. Although, maybe the way I did this is not very bright. So if we have an out, input of 100, uh, turn on fire. Um, if we have less than one ammo, turn off fire. Um, oh, hang on, here's how we do this. Sleep one while we're firing. And always, um, yeah, always do that. Um, uh, so we'll caption this end, or label it end, because um, the next thing we're going to need to test is if we're not alive. Uh, and then just jump to end. And if we're out of ammo, jump to end. Else if we fire, subtract one. Um, emit a 100. Um, Let's see, do I have this backwards now? I think that'll work. 
think that'll be okay. It's not efficient, but it looks okay. Let's get rid of my breakpoint. Somehow I'd set this other breakpoint. Let's get rid of that. There we go. We have a solution. It's disgusting. I don't like it, but it is a solution. How can I do better? How can I improve? Because I really don't like the way I coded this at all. And I kind of like don't enjoy the way I, the circuit's designed either. Um... Alright, so move x3 to dat. So input goes to dat. Check if dat is equal to 10. If dat is 10, um, reload the weapon. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, um, what are two inputs on the right again? They're trigger and reload. Um, I guess that's that. I'm still, I want to do better than this. I feel like this is anything but an elegant solution. And I understand I don't have a way to do nested statements here. Although it would be nice if I could put a label on the same line as a plus or a minus. So I could jump to... Um, well, anyway. Um... It's just so inelegant. It really is. Now... Hmm. I'm looking at the 4000X. It's got four X pins. But I need a simple output. I can't connect like an X pin to... Um, a simple out, right? Yeah. I need to have a simple output going to a output pin. Or rather, only data pins can connect to data uh, pins. So I can't use the 4000X. We do have all these other cool chips at our disposal if we can come up with creative ways to use them. Um, one thing I kind of want to do, wait, no, fire indicates, yeah, we can't have a feedback loop here, that'd be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> or rather, if we could manage to have a feedback loop, um, that would be creative for sure. You'd have to have this chip output. I don't know, you'd have to like use um, inverters and stuff to go to the fire port. No, that wouldn't work either. You might be able to do something with all these logic gates. Uh, on the left side of the chip, there's almost certainly use for logic gates in place of what we did. Um, because what we did is not particularly complicated logic on the left. What we're doing on the right is uh, much more sophisticated. Um, 
where we need to check are we alive and if so we have to admit a zero and stuff. Um, wait, our first output will always be um, a zero, right? Like I can always do this. Oh, but I can't always sleep at the beginning of the program. This is our problem. Um, mm -hmm. Still, grabbing this particular instruction and moving it to the top should not cause a headache. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, I've got a creative idea here. This is going to suck a little bit, but um, we need to grab the input value. But then immediately after grabbing that, we can sleep. Um, and so what this means um, is that we can just jump back up to loop here. Okay. Wait, what's our difficulty? Label not defined, loop, lop, loop, whatever. So the point is we want to skip over the emitting of a zero in most cases. But is this equivalent? No, not at all. Okay, so I've got a phase there. Yeah, I can't sleep immediately here. We will need to sleep sometime. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now we're not emitting a one. I wonder why not. Because we immediately read. Um, well, I didn't make the program any simpler now, did I? This is probably an easier way to write it, but, um, okay. So what went wrong here? I'm not seeing what failed here. We are certainly alive. Um, our accumulator went down to zero. Interesting. So my trying my attempts to restructure this program uh, to make it more efficient didn't quite cut it. I've got what I originally started with here, right? I thought I saw a red line there. That spooked me. Uh, let's look at this back in slower motion. Just run it. Oh, we don't get to see all those later runs. All right, fair enough. Um, let's see. Okay, um, this is getting more and more complicated. Certainly, usually you'd use like a VHDL compiler to try to optimize this further. Usually it would not be the task of a human to attempt to optimize um, hardware and software configurations. Given that the human specified things correctly, computers are pretty good at optimizing things. That said, it's still a fun challenge, and that's why we play the game. Um, but it appears there's not any code-based solution to fix what we have on the right. And unless we can do on the left the same thing as this, um, like we see this is 3, um, unless we can do that just like with logic gates, with at most two logic gates, there's not a way to optimize this further. There might be a way to do that with two logic gates. Um, 
I'd be surprised. But, yeah, maybe... Actually, wait, we have a DX300 in there, too, right? Okay, so... I could use the most three logic gates to try to emulate what this configuration on the left is doing. Um, we copy this. And from having copied it, see, can I do the same thing? Um, but without the DX300 and without the MX4000. Just with some combination of and, or, not, etc. Um, here, let's just dismiss all prejudices right away. I think we understand what's supposed to happen here. Um, let's see, if hit, we have alive. Uh, which is somehow going to connect to our combination of chips. So, do we have an OR chip? Yeah, that's a AND, I believe. This is a NAND. Let me just check the reference manual to make sure I've got all my symbols correct. The LC7 whatever series. Uh, so we have an inverter, an AND gate, an OR gate, and an XOR gate. So this is our OR gate. So if we are alive or we respawn, okay, we have an XOR gate, which we would use to flip a value. Um, so what if we do all this stuff? Something like this, simply what we're looking for? Probably not. Um, but how great would it be if it were? So if we're alive... No, I'm sorry, this XOR is going to cause us to cause some madness here. We need an AND gate. Uh, that's an AND gate, apparently. Um, if we're alive and we're not hit, uh, then we're good. Right? So as soon as we respawn, feed into this loop, um, I think it's that simple. For hit, um, then that's bad. How does this do? Oh, what? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay. I had hoped that we'd be able to do asynchronous input and output. Is that a problem? Like, is that a problem? Okay, let's just move this over a touch just to make this a little bit more beautiful. Okay, so we have, we're not hit, we're not yet respond, yet somehow we do have a 100 flowing out here. I'm not sure from what. Well, no, we do have a signal, a positive signal between our OR chip. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the deal? Do I seriously need a DX300 to make this work? I'd hope that this circuit would function somewhat like a capacitor, and that it would be able to like retain the value that I previously set. What if I just like disconnect this? And try to advance. We still have a positive signal going out. Okay, let me read the documentation, just to make sure I understand how an AND gate is supposed to work. Because I'm pretty sure I understand. 
you have inputs. Oh, the bottom one is input output inverted. Okay. I see. All of these have input, input, output, output inverted. That's the little dot there is the inverter. Okay. That makes an enormous amount more of sense. Um, all right, let's try that. Okay, so we can continue, so that's good. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, so my mind has not failed me here. All right, so like everybody came up with that solution. There are better solutions, but we did find it. Um, yeah, and that greatly reduces power consumption. Interesting. Um, can I beat that? Is there a better logical construction for this? We want, uh, am I alive and am I not hit? Now I understand that the, the, the way that this is feeding does work, but um, do I really need an OR gate? What happens if I take out the OR gate? Just like connect this directly. Part connected to self. Part connected to self is really a problem? Okay, yeah, I guess it is. You're right. You're right. I can't connect the part directly back to itself. That would be a no-no. Okay. Um, well, I'm kind of embarrassed to copy this, but we are going to copy it. New design one, copy, 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 final, 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 for real, copy, final. Um, but no, we're going to see what I can do here. Flipping this part. Uh, we don't need to connect it to self, but... Okay, what's the right way to do this stuff? Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, and really... Okay, flipping this is not in our interest, because we still need the correct value to propagate off to the right. Um, so let's do something like that. Uh, this is going to have a positive feedback. Um, so we want... Am I alive? And have I not been hit? Well, so we have AND chips, OR chips, and XOR chips. Um, and amazingly, they all cost the same exact amount. Um, All right, so let's try an XOR chip, right? In fact, let's get rid of that while we're at it. Uh, let's try... Am I alive? Oh, we can't connect it directly to itself. Okay, that does complicate things slightly already. Um... <laughs> Let's throw an ore chip in there. I'm getting more and more skeptical with every chip I add. But okay. Um, alive, XOR, hit. Invert. Whatever. Um, so, or what if I have two XOR chips? How am I going to do this? No, we have an OR chip inverted. And let me move this a bit to the left. Um, get rid of our solder. And something like this. So am I alive? Or have I respond? Invert that. 
and my hit, um, use an XOR here. So what this means is, am I dead, or have I been hit? And I suppose you could be hit while you're dead. That kind of ruins things. Um, unless I were to bridge these two together or something. What happens if we do that? If I'm alive, respawned, or hit... Um, I'm sorry, if I'm alive, or I've been hit or respawned, negate that. Let's just see what happens. Okay, we have a failure already. And if I withdraw that connection, uh, it's closer, but I'm skeptical. Oh, are we stuck? You're stuck for some reason there. Why does this get stuck? What's up with this feedback loop? That's interesting. So... I don't understand why this is failing. Have I done something dumb? No, not necessarily. We've got a hundred, a hundred, and a hundred. Oh, we have a feedback loop that's negating itself repeatedly. This is inverting itself continuously, is our problem. Um, yeah, this continuous inversion is not good. And there's no way to get that to stabilize, so it's alternating between a 0 and a 100 repeatedly. And possibly values in between, depending on how your hardware works. Um, when you're dealing with undocumented use cases like that one strange things can happen. Um, yeah, I think what that means is that we probably can't do this with two chips. Unless we have something super clever, but I don't think so. Like, if there's some way I can XOR and XOR things together, maybe. Um, but one of the feedbacks, or one of the inputs to the first XOR operation is going to have to be, am I alive or not? I mean, since we're here, there's no harm in throwing the chips in place and seeing what happens. But I'm doubtful. Right, so this is not stable at all. Um, whereas, what if I do that? That's not stable either. Um, and if I, I don't know, do I have enough room to fit this off to the right? Uh, so if I instead do this and connect these pins together, what do we get? Yeah, so all these things are terrible feedback loops. You could try various logic chips and see what happens, but it's not going to work. This is an AND chip. This is like the most ridiculous one to put here. Right, so... Yeah. You could try every combination of these chips, but I don't think there's a way with just two chips to make that work. Uh, meaning that this using just simple logic chips on the left is apparently our best solution. I wonder, can I full screen and look at this? It's kind of beautiful. Nice. Alright, well, I'm going to take one look at this particular circuit here. Unfortunately, there's no start button from this view. Um, so on the left we have all our lo uh, simple logic chips. On the right, we've got a 
In fact, this is the most beautiful view I've seen to... Why am I not just doing it in this view or perspective by default? Ah, uh, but yeah. So here, I'm saying, can I remove one or more instructions and still end up with the same functionality? My guess is there's probably a way to do it, I just don't see how. Um, we do need the DX300 due to the number of simple ports involved, because we have three simple ports here. Meaning we'd either need the DX300 or we'd need two MC4000s um, in order to be able to process so many simple inputs. Um, it is interesting, the, the costs of the parts, but, but yeah, it doesn't decrease our part count to try to do things more cleverly. Um, okay. Oh, I guess we could reorder our instructions without consequence, right? Like, if we are firing, all we need to check is, is the character alive? No, reordering the instructions can complicates the reload thing. Um... Yeah, the, it's by far this logic is simplest if we do the reload first, irrespective of whether the character's alive. And then second, um, if the character, if P0 is 0, uh, as indicated here, then we just jump to the end and emit a 0. Um... Hmm. There are ways to rewrite this to uh, reduce power consumption. Um. Test if our accumulator is equal to zero. Jump to the end. I can't put a test inside a test, right? Or maybe I can. I'm not even sure what that means. Um, test if we're greater than zero. Test if we're... Okay, let's try that. That might not be supported syntax, but if it is, um, it should work beautifully. Yeah, so you can do nested conditionals. How about that? 12 lines of code, 386 power consumption. So that's the other solution most people found. So you can actually nest the conditionals. Um, that's interesting. I didn't know that the language would uh, support that. But since it does, let's abuse the heck out of the feature. Um, Alright. So... Um, right. And now we don't have any jump end commands here, so we can just get rid of um, the end label. So that's another nested conditional. This should do the same thing. It doesn't. Uh, I don't know why not. Um, maybe my whole thing about nested conditionals wasn't true after all. Um, oh wait, maybe it is. 
but instead of testing is my p0 equal to 0, we need to check is it equal to 100. Or, yeah, just test if we're equal to 100 instead of if we're not, 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 not 0. Yeah, that works. So that's another saved instruction. Again, not too complicated. Again, saving a little bit more power. Um, but can I do better? We're really making progress with that program there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 instructions, right? 5, yeah, 11 instructions. Not quite enough to condense it into one program. Um, hmm. hmm. Now I wonder. What if I put a minus here? What do we get? Well, that's just magic. That's pretty cool. Yes, it does somehow increase power consumption, but does reduce us to 10 lines of code. Um, yeah, I think the extra sleep command, the extra one line of code, is not nearly worth uh, the power loss, but uh, it's an open-ended game, uh, so you can make various trade-offs. Yeah, so this, um, who cares about lines of code? And I guess that's why it's listed last, after production cost and after power consumption or usage. Um, I think that's about as simple as it's going to get. Well, let's see. We're using four pins on that device. Let's copy the design, and instead of using this, um, now that we know uh, how that works, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten commands. Do ten commands fit on an MC4000? I don't think so. I think only eight fit. Um, nine fit. So if I could manage to remove one more command, um, then the whole program would fit on an MC4000. Okay, so that's the challenge. Um, how do I remove one more command? Not only that, I'm going to need to get rid of the distinction between accumulator register and a data register. Um, we'll need this to somehow feed directly into something else. Which sounds ill-advised. Like, we need the ammo port to connect directly to our input which is going to confuse the heck out of everybody, but uh, if we can do it, that would save on production cost. Super bridge, just connect it like right above and below the wires and stuff, but no. <laughs> uh, uh, that's not going to work. Um, also, I'm not confined to this tiny little space by any means. Uh, there is plenty more room on the card if I have to move things about, but um, thankfully, just through the grace of this game. Also, I could just move the ammo thing over here next to P0, which might be easiest. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, let's just do that for now. Or do that right now, rather. Oh, pin type mismatch. I didn't know that. That's a data type of port. Okay. Um, I should have known that. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, I'm not going to be able to solve this immediately. I'm going to have to actually stew on, think about this for a while. Obviously, part of this is, um, well, I was going to say, part of this is using this DX300 in read-write mode. Um, but this uh, will be constantly writing over the port. What is this part called? I'm pretty sure that part... I'd be surprised if we did anything other than constantly writing. Um, let me just check the reference manual. I could be surprised as to how these things are supposed to work, but... Um, what's this part called? Uh, set by the operator using a dial. Well... So there's no discussion about the semantics of the dial. But I've got to believe that like a dial is just constantly emitting output. No, it's a data port. Um but it's always emitting data. Uh and not in the same way that a signal uh simple port constantly emits a high and low signal. Um I guess my point is that it's always available to be read from, but I don't know if it's necessarily deliberately doing a write. I don't know. I'd have to see how that works. It's interesting. Um. Yeah, there's no simple way about this. Well, hang on, hang on. No, we need another DX300 to feed. Well, no, this is a simple, this is a data value. This needs a processor to read the data value. Using the DX300 would only complicate matters. Um, unless I were to read out this port. And if I were to read out this port, um, what would that even read out? I think that would. S hmm. I need to check the DX300, what it says it does. Yeah, so. Writing an XBUS value to the DX300 will put its simple IO pins into output mode with the specified output values. Uh, reading an XBUS value from the DX300 will put pins into input mode, clearing any previously set output values. See, I didn't read that last part. Clearing any previously set outputs. Um, which is to say... Hmm. Did I need this bridge and all that? I'm thinking I didn't. Thinking I probably could have just connected this directly. Um, just kidding. We need a bridge, but it needs to be something like this. And instead of writing to P1, it could be X2. And this should work. No. 
Expected 100, actual 0. Now why is that emitting a 0? So here we should certainly be emitting something over the X2 port. Oops. Okay, we'll breakpoint on this. Advance to breakpoint. Step. Yeah, move 100 to X2. And 100 went to the X2 and just bam, it's done. Um, this should instead have been a, a 001 to X2. Yeah, that should work. So there was no need for me to connect this directly. I could have used the DX300 to do the output. Um, now that's uh, our X bus values going into the 300 are expected to be just uh, a value in the hundredths place, a value in the tenths place, and a value in the ones place. Um, what happens if I say move 2 to x2? Do we still get our desired output? Yeah. What happens if we say move accumulator uh, to x2? Yeah, that's still what we want. <laughs> Except for here, where we've already decremented accumulator too much. Um, but if we decrement after having done the output, then that's okay. Except here. Um, interesting. I don't know why that failed here. Obviously, accumulator zero by the time we hit there, but. Wait, did we have another failure before that point? Yeah, this is our first failure. Let's put a breakpoint there and figure out what's going on. Um, so our accumulator is set to 20. That's a pretty high, nice high value. Um, move accumulator to X2. How did our accumulator ever get a value of 20? Oh, I see. Right, so this is saying don't assume that the accumulator is always... Yeah, okay, I got it. Because we can't make such assumptions about the accumulator, we do have to admit a 1 or a 0. We can't assume that this is always going to be less than 10. We can assume it'll be less than 100. Um, but that's not helpful. Right, so what else? I'm curious what the power consumption of this comes out to, but that doesn't matter. Um, yeah, 435. So that's not my best power consumption. Going back out through the DX300 certainly does not save on power. But we did have the option to do that. Um, but yeah, it makes. Oh, instead we just bridge this way. Um, and we're back to what we originally had. Um, which is just fine. I was just curious how the DX300 could be used. Let's see, can we do better? Well, probably, but this is actually starting to shape up a bit. I did not manage to get this down to five, six, seven, eight. This is still 10 lines of code. I did not manage to get rid of a line of code. Um, 
I don't know if I could remove a sleep and expect this to work. Sleep one, or sub one. Sorry, where's our sleep? We only sleep once here. We do need to do that on either output. Um, mm -hmm. How often do we use the data register, DAT? Use it up here, we use it there. We use it here as well. Um, do we have to use the data register? Removing X3 into data. What happens if I just introspect D3 over and over? Is that okay? Yeah, apparently um, D DX300 gives us a consistent input, which in turn should mean we don't need to use the data register at all. We just use the input register, which also means we've cut this down to eight instructions, or nine instructions. Um, so the fact that it is nine instructions exactly means this finally fits on a DX300. And since it fits, let's use that instead. Uh, the port names aren't exactly the same, but that's okay. Um, right, so our input is no longer x3, but is simply x1. But the same concept applies. And the same logic works just fine. Beautiful. All right. Um, can we do better? Somebody managed to do better. Um, but they might have used some kind of really powerful, I don't know, lots of really expensive chips to do it. It might have taken many lines of code. I'm not entirely sure. But this seems like an excellent compromise um, or trade-off between all the factors that are involved. Um, uh, just for aesthetic reasons, I'm just going to tidy this up a bit. This is not at all required. I just like the way it looks this way slightly better. Um, I think that just looks slightly more beautiful. Oh, hang on. Let's do this right. Let's send this off on a bang. Oh, I can't do that and start the simulation. Simulation go. It's beautiful. Excellent. What better note to end this on? Got some laser tag. Let's take a look at what they say. Joe, it would be great if you focused on business instead of constantly suggesting distractions. Also, I would destroy you. Oh, oh, oh my. Just got word from my friend. He's purchased the building for his first... I, I can't bring myself to write it out. His first location. Not sure I want to imagine how much of his retirement he's put into it. It's always nice to have a dream. But sometimes there's a reason you shouldn't pursue it, you know? Awesome Plex! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, at least Joe's having fun with it. Yeah. Well, what better note to end things on? What an excellent session we had here today. Finally really starting um, to get a hang of this game. As well as... Um, what's it? I was going to say getting a better hold of the instruction set and what all the chips have to offer and such. But I think we finally today, at the very end there, though it took us a while, we finally did some really interesting optimization with this. I expect that later puzzles, problems, will provide greater opportunities for optimization, um, especially using the logic gates in places of writing actual code. Uh, I will, at some point, start looking over some of the original puzzles 
and seeing if we can uh, solve them with logic gates as well. I imagine so. Um, but yeah, understanding how we get uh, how we can form a loop where it doesn't cause the capacitors in the AND, OR, and XOR gates to melt down. Um, it was an interesting exercise. I don't fully understand it, although I have read the literature about the subject, but it's been about 15 years, so give me a break. Either way, um, yeah, this has been a good session here. Um, I'm enjoying this game the further we get into this. And I think I'm a better understanding that you don't go for the gold all at once. Um, you try to use more expensive chips and then see if you could simplify the program a bit. And then once you have a simpler version of the program, then uh, try to flash it onto cheaper hardware, just as a practical piece of advice. Uh, it seemed to save me a lot of time in this last puzzle, even if that did take me a considerable time to solve the puzzle. I think it would have gone much slower had I tried to use the cheaper hardware first. In any event, um, yeah, I enjoyed this game. I really, it's everything I could have hoped for, I think. Minus some really subtle, simple conveniences um, that are present in TIS 100. Just a slightly richer instruction set. Although, I do think um, the slightly challenging uh, instruction set here where you don't have every assembly command under the sun or every I forget the uh, VHDL is not the right word but every opcode uh, that you'd have in other languages uh, is not present here it's a simpler instruction set and I think that appeals more to new users but it'd be nice for power users if they had greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. Thanks for watching. It's been a really productive session here. And yeah, welcome to Shenzhen Province. Uh, it's getting warmer out there. Uh, so yeah, stay warm, keep safe, and have a good night.